Hello and welcome to Engineering Design Graphics. Today we're going to be looking at how to illustrate motion. To do that, we'll be drawing a small hand cranked flashlight. Now this is a um, very cheaply manufactured uh, object, but it will allow us to get inside and illustrate this uh, motion in part because it's so nicely transparent. Uh, we specifically want to look at the way the gearing a mechanism engages with the clutch and causes it to turn the flywheel. So when the gear turns clockwise, the clutch turns counterclockwise and its teeth engage with the notches in the flywheel. We will see that in the drawing. And when the uh, handle retracts, the gear turns the other way, um, the flywheel disengages its teeth and um, resets to its start position. Now, I'm going to show you three different ways to illustrate motion today. The first is the most common and simplest, um, and keeping it simple is very important when we're showing things in motion because we're asking the viewer of the drawing to fill in the blanks. Um, because of course we can't show the motion itself, we have to indicate symbolically or in some other way uh, the motion. So when we draw the, the clutch, we're going to just going to draw the clutch mechanism itself and the way its teeth engage with the flywheel. Um, we use arrows to show the directions of rotation. Uh, in this case, when the clutch turns counterclockwise, the flywheel also turns counterclockwise. And this brings us to why we need a second way of showing motion, namely frames. In the first frame, we show the clutch engaged. Uh, in this case, we use some leaders with text to call out the parts of the mechanism. And then we move on to a second frame in which we're going to draw the same scene. Make sure you draw the same scene from the same angle um, and clearly label that this is a different state, uh, in this case clutch disengaged, and that that different state is going to show the other sort of key frame in the functioning of the device. You can see how the teeth are retracted back against the main body of the clutch mechanism and I'm showing with small arrows the fact that they are rotating uh, clockwise while the flywheel continues because it is weighted to turn counterclockwise. So that's how that works. Now often we will find that it, we don't have enough um, information in a simple drawing, particularly just with arrows, even with frames, uh, that or we may have a very complicated mechanism that we don't want to draw over and over again uh, with multiple frames. So we need a way to show motion that is more economical, um, that can use just a single drawing that we were making of a particular subject. So with this drawing, I'm going to draw the entire flashlight in a section view using a dashed line to show where the primary gear is over the top of the thing that I actually want to draw, uh, namely the clutch mechanism and the way uh, it rotates. When it comes time to show motion, I'm going to show motion using phantom lines. Now remember, a phantom line is a long dash with two shorts. Um, it shows things that are not uh, visible, uh, but are nonetheless part of the mechanism that we are designing. If you remember the two keyframes that you worked out when you were drawing the frames, you're going to use those same two positions here um, and try to make as clear as possible the functioning of the device through your choice of where the, the two positions are that you are illustrating. You will very rarely want to illustrate more than two positions uh, because the uh, drawing can get muddy and confusing very quickly if we have multiple phantom lines. For the same reason, when we draw phantom lines, we don't want to draw the details of the particular objects that are phantomed. Uh, we want to just draw the outline of the object so that the drawing doesn't get too confusing. We're really just showing the object in a different position, indicating that position without indicating all the features of the object. We rely on the visible lines of the first position to show that. Now in this case, uh, I really want to show both the, the position of the clutch and the way that relates to um, the lever that drives the gear mechanism. So I'm going to have to draw a little more detail in with the gear and then 
after that to draw the way that handle um, applies force and impels the whole thing in its rotation. So the handle uh, is connected to a rack, which is sort of a linear gear. Um, and that rack drives down and turns a small gear uh, located right at the axle of the large gear. Um, that, of course, causes the large gear to turn, and um, that makes our mechanism go. So I'm drawing the rack, and where the large gear is over the top of the rack, I'm going to again show dashed lines. Um, I'm going to now use phantom lines to show the second position of the handle and rack. Uh, that's really all there is to it. Um, try to keep your drawing simple and clear, and try to boil down your design idea to the key states of its motion. Thanks for watching. attribution non-commercial no derivatives 4.0 us license that means feel free to share it all you want but please don't sell it or change it